Today we will be adding functional components to our project. Now a quick recap, we are running the example React project over here to the right and we used create react app to create our project to begin with and then we looked at the app function this is a functional component and to understand it better we looked at the jsx within the app and we changed some of that default jsx and right now we're calling a function here called handle name change and it loads whatever name is randomly generated with this function up above but today we want to add more components to React because that is some of the power of React. We can create functional components and they're reusable. I'm going to use snippets and this is ES7, React, Redux, and GraphQL snippets, I believe is what it says over here if I were to extend that. But just go ahead and add this extension to VS Code if you don't have it. Or if you don't add the extension, you can type out everything you see me quickly generate with the snippets. Now before I go ahead and create another functional component, let's look at the index.js. Notice in this index.js we have an import statement where we import the app component as it's injected into the DOM. And now we're going to do the same thing. We'll create a component and then import it, but we'll import it into the app component, which is the parent of all the other components in the component tree. So notice we have our div with the class name of app, and then we created a header. So instead of this header, let's just go ahead and create a new file. And I'll do that over here in the file tree. And I'm going to name this file header with a capital H dot JS. And now that I have this empty file, I'm going to use the snippets. Now in Windows, it is control alt and the letter R. I believe on Mac and Linux, it might be command shift P. If, if it is not command shift P, uh, go ahead and press that and then search for ES7 snippets and you'll see what the control is for that. Let me go ahead and show you that. I can do that as well here where I can press control shift P in Windows. And then if I type ES7 snippet search, there it shows me control alt R for Windows is the command, but I could also just choose it here. So now I'll press Control Alt R here in Windows, and I'm going to type underscore R A F F C E. And this will help me create a functional component. It will generate a generic one. So I'll press Enter. And here's my functional component. And notice it inserted the name header already because I've created header.js. And now we're not bound to use div. It's very easy to get caught up just using divs when you're using React, but it's best to stick with the semantic HTML. We do not have to give up our other practices just because we're using React. So I'm going to create a header element here instead of the div element that we have. And now inside the header, I'm going to place an H1, and now we can put whatever we want here. I'm going to call this groceries list because if I make a list it's usually to buy groceries so I'll go ahead and save that as our header and there we have our header component it's already exported here and that's what we need to happen to import it into the app component so now we can import header from and then we have dot slash because it's in the same folder header. We don't need to add the JS. So now we've imported header. We haven't used it yet. And we're also going to get rid of the logo. So let's go ahead and get rid of this import. And now we'll go ahead and change some, not all yet, but some of the code we have inside of our JSX here. So I'll go ahead and take this header out and I'm going to put the header in. And you can see it's a custom element essentially here in the JSX that says header. We've imported it and now this has full color so you know we're using it. And we can save this and of course things will change. And we have our groceries list header now at the top. So we created a separate functional component and imported that component. Now let's create another one. And I'll create a new file over here and I'm going to just call this content.js. 
And we'll do the same thing. I'm going to press Control Alt and the letter R because I'm on Windows and then it's underscore R A F C E. And we've got our content functional component started. Once again, I'm not going to use a div. I'm going to use a main element as this is the main content of the page. And here I'm going to paste what we had and maybe alter it just a little because I went ahead and copied the header element that we didn't need. Everything else looks good for now. Oh, we won't use the image and we're not importing the image. Remember, we would have to import that into the file if we did. And then I can just clean up the blank lines. And I'll go ahead and tab over to keep the structure the way we're used to seeing it. But we don't have handle name change here either. So let's go back to our app component and let's take this logic out of the app component and we can put it directly into the content component. So now we still have our function available for our JSX and we can save this, but we haven't imported it yet. So we don't see it over here. Let's import that right here. Import content from dot slash content. And now we can add our content functional component right underneath the header and save and we got hello Bob because our function is still working so if we reload we might get another name yes we got hello Kevin and maybe we'll get Dave on the next one nope Kevin again it's all just random if you remember and now we still need a footer so one more component to create and we'll call this footer with a capital F footer JS now that we're here, control alt R and then underscore R A F C E. And we've got our generic footer component. And if you remember from semantic HTML, there is a footer element. So there's no reason to just stick with the div. And now we can add just a little more logic to our footer. Above the return in our footer component, let's go ahead and define a variable called today. And let's set that equal to a new date object. And from there, we'll be able to refer to that inside our JSX. So let's go ahead and create a paragraph. And here we're going to say copyright. And then we'll put the copyright symbol, which is and copy or ampersand copy with a semicolon. And from there, we can refer to the date with an expression. And all we really want is the year. So we can say today dot get full year and we'll call that and then we of course need the ending curly brace and if we save that of course we don't see it here yet because we need to import it we will come back to the app js import our footer from dot slash footer and then we need to put it inside the jsx of the app component and save. And there we get copyright 2021. So with the three functional components that we've created today, you can see two of them encapsulate logic. And of course they all could, but we have the handle name change encapsulated inside the content component. And we also have just a little bit of logic encapsulated inside the footer component. The parent component for all three functional components we created today is the app component and we had to import all of the components that we created, header, content, and footer, into the app component, and then we were able to place them inside the layout of the JSX of the app component. Now, you may have installed the React Dev Tools I've previously recommended. If not, remember you can go to the Chrome Web Store and search for React Dev Tools, and there you'll find the React Developer Tools. I highly recommend installing those. Let's briefly look at our project with the React Dev Tools. Now I'm going to right click and choose Inspect to open up the Dev Tools. And React Dev Tools just become part of your regular Dev Tools in Chrome. I'll drag that down. And if I choose Console, now notice instead of to the right, today I'm showing the console at the bottom of the page. And you can click the three dots over by the X on the right of the Dev Tools 
and kind of choose where you want the dock to be. So I usually have it to the right. If you've watched some of my other tutorials today, I have it to the bottom and that's fine. Now here's our app running. And if you click the arrows, notice we've got a couple of extra choices here and we're going to use components. These are part of the React Dev Tools. And if I use components, I'm just going to drag this up. You can see the component tree. So here's the parent app. And then here are the three components that we created today. And as we add more components to this project, and as you learn, we'll continue to observe these and see how the component tree grows. Hey, thank you guys so much for liking the video if it helped you get started with React. Also, I appreciate you watching and subscribing. It's helping my channel grow. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.